Hello, I'm Mark Blunden and this is the Standards Tech and Science Daily podcast. Coming up, hear the pink noise linked to better sleep, but first... Scarlett Johansson says she was shocked at how eerily similar one of the robo-voices created for ChatGPT sounded to her own. OpenAI announced a pause in the use of one of its ChatGPT avatars after it drew comparisons with the speaking style of the Hollywood actress and she brought the lawyers in. In a statement, Johansson says she was angered that the AI voice apparently sounded much like hers, which she claims came after turning down an approach from the company for the vocal work. However, OpenAI says the avatar's voice was not an imitation of Johansson's and it was in fact an actress using her own natural speaking voice. Next, staying with the self-thinking technology and the AI Soul Summit kicks off on Tuesday as some of the world's leading computer scientists warn that insufficient progress has been made getting it under control. AI only really has the power that we give it to start making decisions or controlling aspects of our lives. And I think now we're at a bit of an inflection point where businesses, individuals, governments are starting to think about, well, how much power do we give to these systems? That's Eleanor Shearer, a senior research fellow at London's Commonwealth Think Tank, who says governments need to be more open about the specific threats that AI poses. I think now we need to start talking specifically about, is it that the environmental costs of running these AI models are high? Is it that labour rights are at risk when automation sweeps through our economy? Or is it about disinformation in elections, etc.? I think we need to start talking specifically about what risks we mean. And what more needs to be done to ensure our laws keep up? I think the UK's current approach, which is basically to say within each sector, the regulator needs to look at how AI is applied in their domain, is not robust enough. I'd really like to see this patchwork approach moving more towards something like what the EU is doing, particularly around actually prohibiting certain use cases. But also I think we need to see regulation coupled with an actual strategy that's globally coordinated to break up the market power of big tech Prime Minister Rishi Sunak will co-host a virtual meeting of world leaders to open the summit. Now, Cabinet Minister Mel Stride says police will look very carefully into whether corporate manslaughter charges should be brought in the infected blood scandal. Stride says the next steps would include whether there should be criminal action against those responsible for the worst treatment disaster in NHS history. More than 3,000 people died after suffering infections, including HIV and hepatitis, from contaminated blood products and transfusions. Next. A study has revealed how microplastics were found in every testicle as part of a men's health study. Researchers from the University of New Mexico found 12 types of microplastics in all 23 human testes studied. The average human concentration was nearly 330 micrograms per gram of tissue, considerably more than recent studies of human blood, which came to only tens of micrograms per gram. Microplastics which enter the body through plastic packaging, some foods, tap water and air, have previously been linked to cancer and fertility issues. Now, that's what's called pink noise, exposure to which is being linked to a better night's sleep. Pink noise is like white noise, except a little bit on the lower end. What we're trying to do with this research is to stimulate or boost slow wave sleep, which is one form of deep sleep. That's Dr. Ronil Malkani, Associate Professor of Neurology at Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine, speaking to the Associated Press. Pink noise has a different sound signature to white, brown and green noise. And in small studies, pink noise pulses have shown promise in improving memory and the relaxation response. Let's go to the ads. Stay there for more news from the world of tech and science. Plus, tech firms failing on pre-election misinformation. Why not hit follow? In the meantime, give us a rating. Welcome back. If you've not managed to see the northern lights shimmering over parts of the British Isles, then you could be in luck. But the regions where the colourful electrical storm appears are becoming fewer and fewer. The aurora will shimmer again over Scotland and Northern Ireland with even a potential of seeing the lights over parts of Northern England and Wales on Tuesday nights. While the Northern Lights will be getting weaker than those seen earlier this month, the Met Office says clear skies could offer another chance. Next, 
Parliament's Joint Committee on the National Security Strategy says the biggest tech and social media companies are falling short on protecting users from content designed to disrupt democracy by not working together on the problem. With the UK general election looming, the committee says it's concerned by the differing approaches across different tech firms around monitoring and regulating potentially harmful content. And finally... It's the Robo Taskmaster you never knew you needed because Sony has unveiled a powerful new tool capable of putting corn back on the cob kernel by kernel. The demonstration film was surgeons at Japan's Aichi Medical University. Why? The company says the super accurate technology behind their microsurgery assistance bot will be used in future medical applications. It allows surgeons to work at up to one tenth the scale possible with human hands alone using joysticks to control the tiny robot's pincer tools. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the latest news, interviews and analysis from the Standard Podcast here in London. And we'll be back on Wednesday at 1pm. See you then.